Uh, Emmett, uh, where are you? I'm down at the expo. I snuck out early to avoid my pop. If he knew I was about to make a publicly scientific spectacle of myself, he'd hit the roof. You know, you really should try to work things out with your dad. If you give him a chance, he might just surprise you. I'll keep that under advisement. But first, I need you to perform an important mission. On the table next to my law books, there's a device plugged into the wall. I, uh, I think I see it. Is it glowing? Yeah. Is that good? Good? It's fantastic! Glowing means my static accumulator is charged up and ready for action. Bring it down to the high school and we'll... Damn! What? It's Edna! But... Okay, Emmett. One static accumulator coming up. Jeez, Doc. Watch out. You almost ran me over. Sorry about that, Martin. This vehicle is sometimes difficult to control. Uh, yeah. Hey, are you okay? After that argument about Emmett last night... I... I'm fine. Thank you for asking. Where have you been all night? I've been driving around, looking up old friends, thinking things over. Okay. So is that what I'm destined to build for the Expo? Yeah, it's a static accumulator. Emmett spent all night building it. Turned out he didn't really need to see Frankenstein after all. He just needed a little push. And, and some lightning. Fascinating. I also had an epiphany last night. Doc? I realized that it wasn't Edna that made my life miserable. Doc! It was science! Even if you screw up Emmett's chances at the Expo, there's no way he'll give up science now. He's too committed. You don't know me like I do. After he fails at the Expo, he'll be in need of comfort. And Edna's already arranged a romantic little trip up to the lake. You can't give up science. You love science. Correction. My younger self loves science, but if Emmett doesn't go through with a demonstration at the Expo, his dreams of being a scientist will dim just enough for Edna to step back into his life and steer him down another path. Another path? What other path? I don't know. Architecture, automobile repair, taxidermy. Maybe I'll even pursue a life in law like my father always wanted. As long as Emmett steers clear of science, Edna and I will be free to be happy together. Doc, I'm begging you. You haven't thought this through. Haven't I? I guess we'll both find out. One thing's for sure. Emmett Brown's life will be a whole lot less complicated without a time machine in it. No! Ah! What the hell? Where'd it go? Oh, come on! Here, little static thingy. I can't reach it. A shiny new tomorrow on the way. A day of invention is at hand. It's a mystic, futuristic wonderland. Just around the bend, my friend, you'll see.
see a dream or two. If you care to dream and dare to dream, your dreams can all come true. There's a world of wondrous wonder on display. Because the future is coming today. Not bad, eh? Not bad at all, but I thought you fired her. I found a loophole. What kind of loophole? Just a loophole. You're not the only one who's allowed to have secrets, you know. All right, all right. Say, don't you have to get that whatchamacallit to Emmett Brown's booth? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, right. Because the future is coming. It's almost here now. The future is coming. It's getting clear now. And here he comes, right on cue. No doubt he'll try to talk you out of it, Detective, but you mustn't let your resolution waver. Hello, Crockett. Where's Emmett? What? Is he missing? Don't you recognize a ploy when you see one? Now, do your duty. Wait a minute, that's Emmett's levitator up there. Oh, don't be so modest. I'd say you deserve at least half the credit. It was you who tricked poor Emmett into breaking up with me. It was you who manipulated him into dropping my project in favor of this clear hazard to public safety. The electrokinetic levitator was Emmett's idea. I just helped. What's your point? Oh, I think you know exactly what my point is. Emmett's invention isn't going to work, is it? At least not the way poor Emmett thinks it is. How do you know this? I had a very interesting chat with Carl Sagan last night. I found out who Sonny Crockett really is, and where he comes from. Is there something you want to tell me, Sonny? Why don't you call him by his real name? Yakov Shmirnov. Thanks a lot, Doc. An anarchist! A foreign agitator bent on sowing chaos and destruction in the Hill Valley Expo! Annie, you don't believe any of this bullshit, do you? Sorry, uh, Yakov, but uh, I really don't have a choice. Very good. And now, arrest this subversive. Come here. Look, here's the thing. I happen to believe this dame's got a screw loose. But she's been getting some clout in town, ever since that business with Kid Tannen. But Emmett's gotta fly that electro -con and my future depends on making sure he doesn't. The chief reads her column religiously. Well, if I don't do what she says, she's gonna start a campaign to have certain tainted officers removed from the force. Isn't there anything I can do? Not unless you've got some dirt on Edna. Something that'll discredit her in the eyes of the law. Well? I'll dig something up. You do that. In the meantime, you and young Mr. Brown better... Where is he, anyway? Wait, you haven't seen him? Emmett? Has this foreign radical done something to my Emmett? Maybe you should find him. Oh! You're letting him go? This radical subversive? Just like that? Okay, so, I gotta find Emmett. And do something about Edna. Welcome to the phone booth of the future, made with Atlas Glass. Atlas, unbreakable and soundproof. Our phone is hands-free, so you can enjoy a sandwich or a cigarette while chatting with friends in perfect privacy. Would you like to place a call? Yes, I'd like to talk to... Unfortunately, this phone booth only accepts incoming calls. Casual. 
He's coming back. Hey, Danny, could I have a word with you? Comrade Shmirnov, come to turn yourself in? In private? With pleasure. Since when does anyone in Hill Valley listen to what Edna has to say? Ever since she helped take down Kid Tannen, she's had the mayor and the city council eating out of her hand. I'd be an idiot to ignore her, especially with my, uh, alcohol-heavy background. Boy, I wish I could catch her jaywalking or something. I'd throw the book at her. Yeah, but you never catch a dame like that breaking the law, darn it. You've got to let Emmett demonstrate his invention. His whole future depends on it. I'd love to, kid, but Miss Strickland thinks it's dangerous. Unless you've got something on her, her word is pretty much law. Any idea where Emmett is? Well, he was working over by his booth, but by the time Edna got done haranguing me, he was gone. I hope he comes back soon so we can get this mess cleared up. What's a newly promoted detective like you doing hanging out in a science expo anyway? Are you kidding me? This is a great assignment! I get to sit around all day playing with nifty new crime-fighting gadgets, like this! What does that do? Hell if I know! You know how you said you'd defy Edna if I could dig up some dirt on her? Yeah? You got some? I saw her whispering about something with Carl Sagan outside the expo yesterday. Do you know what they were whispering about? No, but she looked really guilty. I need something more solid than that, I'm afraid. You know how you said... Yeah? She sent this, uh, this goon to beat up my dad and steal his videotape. That's awful. What's a videotape? Uh, never mind. You know, she kidnapped a friend of mine, and she tried to erase his brain. That's terrible. But when did this happen? In, uh, the future. Stick to the facts, kid. I have enough people come to me with cock and bull stories. You haven't seen Carl Sagan around here, have you? Nah. Is he still a wanted man? Nah. All those arson charges got dropped weeks ago. Judge Brown said there wasn't enough evidence for a trial. Thanks. I'll be... No, oh, I hope... Well, did you put the screws to him? Did he confess? Oh. Hello, Shmirnov. Danny, can I talk to Edna for a minute? Be my guest. I'd like a couple minutes of quiet. What's this about? Why is Parker so willing to do your bidding? <laughs> well, the good detective knows that he owes his current rise through the ranks to my reporting on his behalf. Oh. He also knows that I could just as easily pen an expose about his previous nights of drunken debauchery and evidence tampering. You're blackmailing him? Reporters don't blackmail, Mr. Shmirnov. We look out for the public interest. Why'd you go and get Emmett's invention sealed up like that? I had no choice. Once Mr. Sagan told me about your attempts to radicalize my poor Emmett, I knew I had to stop him from going through with your dangerous invention. But it's his invention, and it's not dangerous. Okay, maybe it's a little dangerous, but only to him. That's for the authorities to decide. Why are you still involved in Emmett's life? I thought you broke up with him. I did, but then your friend Mr. Sagan told me about your scheme to interfere with our romance. Not a very nice thing to do, Comrade Shmirnov. Any chance you could talk Parker into letting Emmett go ahead with his demonstration? None whatsoever. And as long as I'm here, that contraption of yours is grounded. I know your deep, dark secret. Secret? What secret? You're ruthless, manipulative, and power-hungry. In the service of a higher cause, one sometimes has to stoop to low tactics. But I'm sure you already know that, Comrade Yakov. I know you're deep. Those 
charities you were working for. They were all just a front. Uh, so you could wriggle your way into those orphanages and... And steal their piggy banks. Right. I know you... Pretending like you wanted to put Kid Tannen away when all the time you were working for him. Oh, how preposterous. I know you... You know, what you were whispering about with Carl Sagan yesterday. You overheard? Sure I did. And you did a really lousy job at, uh, burying the body. Oh, you didn't hear a thing. What I was talking about with Carl Sagan is between me and Carl Sagan. Have you seen Mr. Sagan around here anywhere? No, and I wouldn't tell you if I had. He's more than a little scared of your anarchistic tendencies. Did you see? Trixie Trotter got her old job back. Oh, I know! I tried to have it out with Arthur McFly, but he refuses to explain himself. Apparently, he discovered some sort of loophole that allows that Canadian to retain her position. Well, the Ladies' Decency Society shall hear about this. Make no mistake. Okay, this... Stay away from him, you anarchist hooligan. Enlightenment awaits you under the sea. How about an algae cake? Sure thing, mister. Wait a minute. You're the guy that makes the algae cakes? What? I thought you couldn't stand them. Hey! You're the guy that tried to pick up on my Eunice! Oh, for the love of... No algae cakes for you, buster! Hey, Artie. What do you think? Quite a setup, huh? The expo? Sure. But I was wondering... Is there any way you can delay Emmett's demo? He ran into some last-minute turbulence. Emmett's already pushed his luck by substituting this electrokinetic what's for the mental alignment meter he was supposed to be showing. I can't alter his place on the roster, too. The board would get the idea I was showing favoritism. Come on, you can tell me. How did you manage to get Trixie her job back? I thought her being Canadian was a deal-breaker. If something's really important to you, you find a way. You ought to know that. Edna Strickland got Officer Parker to close Emmett's booth down. What? Why? She claims his invention is dangerous. Is it? That's not the point. Is there anything you could do? I am afraid not. This may be a wondrous land of tomorrow, but it's still within the jurisdiction of the Hill Valley Police Force. Maybe you should talk to Officer Parker. He says there's nothing he can do as long as Edna's got clout in Hill Valley. She does have that. See you around. Hi, Trixie. That's tech. Need to you, kiddo. Right. Uh, congratulations on getting the old job back. Thanks. Justice triumphs in the end, you know. Now, what can I do you for? You seen Emmett around? I'm kind of worried that he's not at his booth. Hmm. Let me think. Uh, yeah, he wandered down that way a little while ago. He was talking real intense with another guy. Older guy? Looked a lot like Emmett in the face? Yeah. Uh, uncle or something? Or something. Look, Emmett's demonstration has hit a snag or two. Can you delay his act for a while? Let someone else go before him? Sorry, I don't set the roster and they won't let me change it. Uh, I can drag my feet a little, but uh, if your friend's not ready to go on pretty soon, we might have to skip his act. Uh, I mean, demonstration. 
but you can't. Hey, it's just a science demo. It ain't a matter of life and death. Already told me how you managed to get your old job back. He did? But it was supposed to be a secret. There's no secrets between us. He couldn't resist telling such a good story. Yeah? Still, I'd like to hear it again, from your point of view. Uh, he didn't tell you anything. Come on, Trixie. I'm dying to know how you got the job back. You won't hear it from me. I don't talk out of turn. What time is Emmett supposed to go on? Let's see. Eight kilobeats past fifty. We're on metric time here at the Hill Valley Expo. Edna Strickland is trying to get Emmett's booth shut down. That dame don't know how to mind her own business, does she? Is there anything you can do to get Emmett's booth open again? <sighs> I wish there was, but I'm just a muse. All we can do is inspire people. Okay, you're a muse. Can you inspire me an idea? I'll try. Well? Maybe it doesn't take effect right away. Thanks. Happy to help. Insert ticket to enter. Hiya! Hi, Trixie. Now, what can I do you for? So, which of the most popular attractions are the glass house, the future furnishings, and of course, enlightenment under the sea. You know who that is under the diving helmet? That's Jacques Duteau himself! Of course, you need to get tickets if you want to see the main attractions. How much are tickets? Aw, oh, put your money away. Here, you're kind of like family now, you know? Thanks. Thanks. plant doesn't belong here. There's nothing futuristic about it. Would you like to place? Yes. Unfortunately. Here's my ticket. Give me a ride in that thing. Thank you, Monsieur. I hope you will find your trip to the bottom of the sea less delightful.
Chinese checkers and everything. In the house of the future, phone conversations will be completed in the privacy of the personal phone helmet. Hey! Please recite the phone number you wish to dial, or say, hang up, to terminate your phone helmet experience. Klondike 4253. Expo, where the future is coming today. This is Checkney News of Progress. To whom am I speaking? This is Carl Sagan. Ooh, the mysterious Mr. Sagan. What do you want? Could you get Emmett for me? Oh, I would, Mr. Sagan, but I can't see the kid nowhere. In fact, the last time I saw him, he was with you. Oh, yes, right. Conversation turn. Greetings again, mortals! This is Techni, Muse of Progress. Hoping you're all having a swell time taking in all the exhibits. Don't forget, you can purchase tickets to our main attractions right here at the information booth. Are you ready for a wonder if that's anything like an a potted plant? What's this got to do with law enforcement? A potted plant? What's this got to do with law enforcement? It's a bug. No, a plant. But it's got a wire recorder hidden inside, see? If we could have got one of these into Tan and Speakeasy, and if he's the kind of guy who talks to plants. We could have busted him a lot earlier. Hey, don't walk off with the recording plant. It's the only one I got. Would you like to play? Yes. Unfortunately. Okay, call me a snoop.
the house of the future, fresh fruit baskets will be replenished daily by... Ah, oh, it's wax! Klondike 4253. Hill Valley Expo, Techni speaking. Who's this? It's me, Carl. Oh, hi, Mr. Sagan. What can I do for you? Can you put Edna Strickland on the phone for me? Sure thing, Mr. Sagan. Hey, Strickland! Somebody actually wants to talk to you. Mr. Sagan. I didn't expect to hear from you again till after the expo. You didn't? Yes. Wasn't that part of our plan? Yes, our plan. How about that plan? I'm a little unclear on the details of our plan. Unclear? But it's your plan. I mean, I I'm worried that you're a little unclear on the details. What details? All I'm supposed to do is use my pole with Detective Parker to get Emmett's demonstration cancelled while you keep Emmett distracted. You are keeping him distracted, aren't you? Oh yes, he's a very distractible young man. Oh, that's what I keep telling everyone. Regarding, uh, you know what? You know what? Uh, the little matter we were whispering about yesterday. Oh, that? As a matter of fact, I'm glad you brought it up. I was thinking, wouldn't it be a good idea to pin it all on Yakov Shmirnov? Uh, uh, pin what on him, exactly? You know, it! Oh, I get it. You're still sore about going to jail. Uh... That was the dog's fault. If he hadn't come glumping up to me right after I started the fire, I could have gotten clean away. And I never would have had to divert suspicion to you. She's the speakeasy arsonist. Carl? Is somebody with you? No! It's just you and me. You know, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. Why? Because no one else was doing anything about them. Every night, they'd open up their doors, serving illegal drinks and loose women, flaunting their depravity to the world, and the authorities did nothing. So I did what any right-thinking, rock-willed woman would do. I took action. Oh, and such a gorgeous action it was, too. The fires were so beautiful. The alcohol made them go up in such pretty blue flames. Uh, where was I? You were explaining why you burned down the speakeasies. Yes. Did you find my answer to your liking? It was very... revealing. Hang up. What? Jeez, Edna was always a loon. I hope that confession's good enough for Parker. Next up on our roster, a man who saw the possibilities in Pond Scum. Welcome, Ernest Philpot! Thanks, Trixie. Uh, uh, technique. I'm truly honored to be here today among all you pointy-headed type people. Like the lady said, I labor in the field of corn scum. Algae, ladies and gentlemen, is a mysterious and little-known biological entity. Through diligent study and countless hours of experimentation, Shh, he's approaching. I believe I can hey, Danny, could I have a word with you? Thought you'd vegetable. never ask. And I am here to present my discoveries to a disbelieving world. You know how you said you defy a... Yeah? Edna's the speakeasy arsonist. That's an interesting theory. It's the truth. I heard her confess. Well, I didn't hear it, so I'm afraid it's your word against hers. Well, no offense, but her word carries a little more weight around here than yours does. Thanks. Well, now, there was something else I wanted to say, but wasn't. Oh, yes. You know, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. I think a lot of people are going to be interested in that answer. Well, speak of the devil. You know, Ed, that's 
consonant. It's the tr- Well, more weight. Thanks. Thank you, Ernest. Do be sure to drop by his booth and sample an algae cake. I have to rest in. I will be back later to highlight another of our fine exhibitors. See you soon. approaching. Thanks. Now, where were we? Act casual. He's... Hey, Danny. Do you mind, comrade? We're busy trying to protect the expo from the likes of you. This'll only take a minute. Our plant recorder. It's not a good idea to steal police property, you know. Shh, listen. You know, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. Why? Because no one else was doing anything about them. D Detective Parker, surely you're not going to believe this crudely manufactured forgery of a recording. I'm not sure what to believe, ma'am. But based on this crudely manufactured forgery, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to come down to the station to answer a few questions about your whereabouts on the night of the speakeasy fires. Oh, very well. I... Heavens, what's that? You know, one of these days I should really stop falling for that. Hey, does this mean that the barricades can come down from Emmett's booth? Let's take that as a yes. Emmett's gotta be around here somewhere. The elect electric stun gun would be pretty useful. Excuse me, Mr. Dito, Jacques Dito, at your service. I'm looking for a friend of mine, Emmett Brown. Tall young guy, reddish brown hair. A uh, distracted look. That's him. Any idea where he went? He just passed by here with an older gentleman. I think they were added into the house of glass. Great, thanks. In there. Don't listen to him. Perfect. Okay, Emmett. Let's get you out of here. Emmett! Emmett! Don't listen to him! He, he's crazy! I'm still not sure about this business proposal, Mr. Sagan. Let me explain it again. Atlas glass. Unbreakable and soundproof. Soundproof glass. Great. Our living space can be configured to meet the needs of any family. Need a private study? Simply slide the walls in or slide them out again to create a spacious banquet hall. 